Hey, Dub Nation, it's Steve Kerr, and you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Well, yeah, but but mainly, Coach, I, I, I think a lot of people might be here right now to listen to you. So, uh, Dibs, ready to rock? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Steve Kerr is brought to you by Xfinity at home or on the go. You'll get the fastest internet to all your devices and presented by Great Clips in sports. Success is about team effort, and the same is true for your hair. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Okay, here he is, Coach of the Dub, Steve Kerr with us as always. Hey, Coach, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, We're doing good. The first thing I'd love to do is give you a chance to talk about what you saw from the players who did play last night it, no, with with Kaminga out and what happened with Draymond uh what 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 would you have to say about the effort of the rest of the group oh man just phenomenal level of uh, competitive fight and spirit um really fun to watch the guys um you know they know how important every game is right now and and uh you could see them come together and and uh, and really fight for everything against a, a really good Orlando team on their home floor on a back to back. So that was a that was a big time win. So you you talk about the fight in a in a big moment in a big time win, and I have to think in my mind that that had something to do with what was going through Steph's mind as Draymond gets thrown out of the game. We've all seen it. What looked like being overcome with emotion. You're there patting him on the back. We don't see that from him very often. What, how would you put into words why Steph responded that way in this moment? Because of uh, everything that you just described. I mean, every game being so important and, um, you know, us fighting for everything and then to, for Draymond to get kicked out three minutes in, um, it was – Really unforgivable, you know, for, and, 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 you know, I think Steph may have even been a little upset with himself for not pulling Draymond out of there, but I think mostly it was just, come on, man, you know, we got, we need this. And, um, and then, you know, Steph is such a fighter. He's such a competitor. He wants it so badly. And um, I think all of that combined just uh, led to that that reaction. What can be done to try to head these things off? And, you, you know, we've talked before to you, Steve, about, you know, calling time out if he gets one tech and maybe giving him time to decompress. But in those moments where he goes from zero to 100 so quickly, what can be done by anyone to try to diffuse it in the moment? Well, I, I actually am kicking myself a little bit uh, because I thought, you know, for the most part from the last uh, six weeks or so since Draymond came back from the suspension, for the most part he's been really good with the refs, and I think he's found a really good balance of, of being competitive and, and feisty and playing with an edge but not going overboard. Um, and that, a lot of that starts with, you know, just staying off the refs. And I thought in the Miami game, he was on the refs too much. And I should have intervened. I should have talked to him after the game and uh, and just reminded him that, you know, this all starts for him finding that right spot. It all starts with being able to uh, stay off the refs. And I didn't. And I so I, I I'm upset with myself for that. As for what happens, you know, after he gets the first tech, um, that's completely up to Draymond. I, you know, we can, you know, I, I watched the whole replay of it. We had multiple players out there. We had multiple security guys out there. Um, at that point, you know, we're not going to drag him back to the bench. That makes makes it look even worse. Um, that looks like he's trying to get to the rest. So it, at that point, it's really up to him to to know I I, I can't I got to end it and um, and he knows that I've talked to him about it. He's talked to Steph about it. He apologized to to Steph and Clay and the whole team. Um, he feels terrible about it, um, but he he made a huge mistake. And and all I can say is thank God we won because had we lost, this would be a much much bigger issue. Coach, it's fascinating to listen to you talk about how how you sort of feel about your own role here and how Steph might feel about his own role here. Um, have you ever seen Steph react in that sort of an emotional way before? Yeah, yeah, a handful of times, not not often. You know, um, 
you know, dur- during the, the seasons that we've had where there's been some frustration, uh, I've seen staff occasionally kind of just lose it and, and become really angry, really emotional. But, it, you know, it might be once a year. It doesn't happen very often. You're hearing national voices again questioning Steph Curry's leadership in terms of Draymond Green's behavior. Just how much culpability is there, even for yourself, when it comes to another grown man and the way he comports himself and and the words he chooses to use at an official? Well, there's culpability for me because I'm his coach, and, and as I just detailed, you know, I felt like, in hindsight, I, I look back at that Miami game and I regret not saying something because I thought he was on them too much. So, so that you know that that's definitely my fault. Um, but uh, to your point, Draymond knows. I mean, he's he's a grown man. He's got to handle his own business. Any any mention of Steph being culpable is just ridiculous. Um, the way Steph has carried our franchise, represented our franchise uh, for 15 years. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. You, you, he was the first one out there. You saw he was the first one out there trying to talk Draymond off and, and uh, handled it the right way. And the reason Draymond got kicked out is because as he was walking back to the bench, he muttered an expletive that uh, the refs heard. And so he deserved it. You can't do that. But that's not Steph's fault. Right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's Draymond's fault. And that's, you know, Steph was trying to do everything he could to get him out of there. Steve Kerr with us, Willard and Dibbs, 95-7 the game as he is every single week. Yeah, Coach, I, I, I bet you get this. Watching this game and this experience, especially a bit, two minutes into the game, this was, for even just the fan perspective, this was intense. This was intense to have this go this way for that player and then to watch Steph Curry uh, react the way he did and, and, and potentially even be in tears b- because of it. Can you take us inside uh, in whatever way you can to, to sort of the, the current moment of the team's mental state when, when something like this happens? Well, there's not much time to discuss it or think about it. And so, you know, we, we took a timeout um, as the tech happened i was upset about the two reaching fouls that we had and the two turnovers that draymond had and I, so i i took the time out um to remind the guys that we needed to play with more uh, poise and discipline next thing i know draymond's gone and um you know the timeout is ending so there's there's not a whole lot of time to say hey like you know let's have a discussion about it. it's just we move on we move forward and uh, that was my message to the team, and everybody uh, followed suit, and the guys, uh, you know, played uh, with so much passion and energy, and and um, it was just a just a wonderful win for us. Yeah, and I, I mean, noticing just the way everybody was kind of reacting in that moment, like it really was kind of a, I, 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 for lack of a better word, it was all. It felt like a touching moment to watch the way you were reacting with Steph. You're patting him on the back as he's as he's dealing with that. What what. What you know? What kind of made you feel like that was what he needed in that moment? Well, I, I could see how emotional he was and how rattled he was by it, and I just, you know, wanted to number one make sure he was all right, but number two, remind him, you know, we gotta we gotta go, we gotta go play, and um, and that you know that's that's about as simple as it gets, but. Um, you know, and I, I felt like the rest of the half, Steph was almost trying too hard. You know, he was he was really forcing the issue and was much better in the second half. Just um, you know, taking what the defense gave us. That's a really good defense. They've got size and length and athleticism all over the floor. And uh, I thought Steph's second half was great. Uh, the way he managed the game and obviously hit the two biggest shots of the game at the end, but um, was just uh, you know really. Um, Playing a more kind of traditional point guard role, he had ten assists and, and only two turnovers, and played uh, played well enough for us to win on a night that wasn't it wasn't his best stuff. Draymond got the first tech for bumping the official, which according to the rules comes with it an automatic one game suspension. Have you gotten word of a suspension, or are you anticipating that he'll be able to play tomorrow night when you're in Charlotte? I I had no idea. Uh, that there was a bump. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't think there was a bump. So I. I. I that's this is the first I've heard of it, uh, Coach. I, I tell you what else. In in just sort of the way uh, this all looked after 
after the game, you know, Draymond's there to congratulate Steph and the rest of the team as you guys head into the locker room. There's also his podcast where he sort of just said his body was in the wrong position and he wished that the ref uh, didn't didn't hear it. That I, I think that sort of resonated with a lot of people a, a, as if maybe he didn't gather the seriousness of this. But that doesn't maybe match with what you said earlier with what he said to the team after the game. What 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 what's your re- reaction to that? Uh, I you know I I don't know. I mean I I all the, all I know is what I experienced and what I saw, and um, so it, it was something that uh, that. Uh, Draymond did the ejection he deserved, and um, I know he's handled it behind the scenes with the team, and he and I have spoken, and we move forward. Is this something where Draymond just takes the team together and speaks to him, or is it something handled in more of a casual manner after the fact? Uh, he talked to them at halftime before before the coaches even got in there. Huh. That's interesting. Steve Kerr joining us here, uh, Willard and Dibbs. Hey, uh, what a night, what a week for Andrew Wiggins. And this comes after comments that you, Clay Thompson, have made, um, you know, talking about wanting him to be more aggressive. So first and foremost, what what did you see from him last night? Well, he was uh, super aggressive, but I, I think, um, you know, part of what you saw too was the fact that Draymond and uh, Jonathan were not out there. Those guys are pretty high usage and, um, Wiggs had the ball in his hands a lot more. So we went to him more often. He felt that responsibility, and I think he really enjoyed the opportunity. And a uh, good reminder to me, you know, that we've got to get him the ball a little bit more than, than we do sometimes. Sometimes he gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. You know, Draymond's pushing the ball. J.K.'s got it. Steph and Clay are shooting. Um, they, Wiggs can go four or five possessions without touching the ball sometimes, and that's a tough way to play. And I thought uh, last night he did, did a great job of continuing to, ta- to attack. And um, But, again, the opportunity was greater for him because of the guys who were missing. So th- that's interesting. You're, you're, you're sort of saying, like, this is just a matter of opportunity for Andrew rather than maybe – his own mindset, which, as you know, like we've all talked a lot about, um, you know, why why Andrew doesn't appear ultra aggressive all the time. Right. No, I I think it's a it's a combination. I think we want him to be more aggressive regardless. But I think giving him some more opportunities with the ball uh, helps him be more aggressive. So I think we've we have to be mindful of that. TJD comes in and has another great performance, 14 rebounds off the bench. Does it feel like that he's really starting to get his full sea legs established and maybe you might uh, think about keeping him in the starting lineup going forward? This guy's really good. He really is. I mean, he, he 14 rebounds last night, the uh, the passing. I thought, um, you know, maybe the biggest basket of the game was Gary Payton's layup, you know, before before Steph's two final shots. Um, that layup came from a, a no-look pass from Trace after, um, you know, Trace had gotten the ball, from, um, you know, from Steph in the pocket and brilliant pass. Um, this guy is really skilled with the ball, um, smart, tough, um, we're lucky to have him, and it's been fun watching him with uh, with Draymond, um, you know, because it gives us more size and and um, just a better paint presence defensively. Um, but you know, if, if we're going to put him in the starting lineup, um, you got to decide who you're going to take out, and I don't think there's an easy answer there either. Um, Coach, what's uh, what's the status of Jonathan Kaminga for tomorrow? Uh, questionable. So he's got some tendonitis. Uh, in his knee, it bothered him during the Miami game, and um, so hopefully, after you know the last two days uh, being off, hopefully he'll be able to go. But at this point, he's listed as questionable. Yeah, hopefully he can come back. It's uh, impressive he's only missed two games all year for the youngster to to come in and be that durable. Kavon Looney, speaking of durability, even though he's had a handful of DNPs of late, feels like you can just dust him off and throw him in there and get uh, quite good production out of him. Loon's been great. I mean, he just, uh, you know, you, you can always count on him. He's so professional. Um, I think he had gone four or five games really without playing uh, much, if at all. And, 
comes in and plays big minutes in these two road wins, but um, doesn't surprise me one bit. Um, Coach, you know, you had, uh, and we understand this whole thing is fluid for sure, but you had talked so glowingly about the role that Clay was playing off the bench. What what was the thought process in bringing him back to the starting lineup, and will he stay there? Well, we just wanted to get a little more scoring. Uh, you know, I, I just felt like uh, the spacing would be a little bit better bringing Clay back. I think he's been in such a good place. I was hesitant to do it, but um, just felt like it was the right time, and, and I think Clay's been great. Uh, it's opened up the floor a little bit more for Wiggs and J.K., and... Um, you know, and for Steph as well, and just gives us a little more pop to start games. And, and you know, BP's going to play plenty uh, regardless of whether he's starting or coming off the bench. He's such an important player for us. And uh, so we'll see. I don't know if it's going to be the entire, you know, last 10 games, but um, we'll play a game by game. It looks like Pods is struggling a little bit with his three ball. It would, do you think it's fatigue or are you seeing something mechanical that's maybe – leading his three-point shot to not be as effective as it was earlier in the year? I think it's just typical for, for rookies especially to, to be you know, a little up and down with their shooting. And, and uh, you know, he's still at a pretty high percentage for the year. I think he's 37 or 38. It's just he's a little streaky. And um, right now he seems to be um, in a little bit of a spot where he, you know, he's not feeling it quite as, as confident. But... Um, Overall, he's a good shooter. I think. I think with Brandon, what you're going to see is uh, as he moves forward in his career, he's going to get better and better um, as he just gets more and more threes up in practice and in games, and, and just gets more comfortable with everything. Coach, I don't know if you're a big Instagram guy, but did you see uh, Tari Eason of the Rockets on Instagram yesterday? No, I'm okay. not an Instagram. Guy. All right, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. So here, th- this yeah. is uh, this is something he put a little video that he put as uh, he's now pointing toward you guys. Warriors! Come out to play! Warriors! Come out to play! Yeah! like that <laughs> okay so 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 obviously the, the rockets have won 10 games in a row and they're very excited so but but in in all seriousness coach i wonder if there's a built-in disadvantage for you guys in any way here in that the rockets are so thrilled to be battling for the 10 seed while you guys are a bunch of champions not really used to this area of the standings yeah, I, I I I don't care. I mean, you know, it's I, I love that. By the way, I, I think uh, you know they should be excited. They're playing great, and uh, you know, the whole point of the play in is to keep teams engaged, and and uh, this is all good stuff. So I'm 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 all for you know people being excited about playing and winning, and so I. But we don't we don't really pay any attention. We just uh, you know we're gonna t- handle our own business. Whatever happens with them happens. I know you're big on scoreboard watching. Light night tonight in the association, but uh, your cats going up against the Clemson Tigers. What are your thoughts? So far, so good for Arizona. Yeah, I will not just be scoreboard watching. I will be watching uh, the cats. <laughs> nice. And, uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I'm fired up. This seems to be our best chance in in a while. Uh, you know, the Staples uh, or crypto now is. Uh, Kind of McHale Center West, and um, you know we got we got a couple of games. Um, if we can win tonight, we got another game against a team that has had to travel across the country one way or the other. So we got a pretty good opportunity here, and it's pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, I got I'm, I'll be pulling for the Cats hard. Yeah, here we go. They're playing in less than an hour. I was just thinking, it's a good thing you're on the East Coast, or you would have canceled this interview, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I would not have talked to you guys. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Wow, <laughs> priorities. <laughs> I get it. Well, we're we're glad that you're uh, sitting there in uh, in North Carolina. Then, uh, thank you, Coach. Great to have you as always. Yeah, you too. See you guys. Thanks. Uh, all, all right, right Steve. there he goes, Steve Kerr, uh, with us.